Birmingham Vegetable Market at 7 a.m. The busy time for stallholders is nearly over. Fresh fruit and vegetables have been arriving here throughout the night. Now there's a rush to get all this fresh produce back to the hotels, restaurants or greengrocers for sale during the day. But how are fresh vegetables kept in good condition for market? And how long will it be before this food becomes unfit to eat? Most homegrown celery comes from the farms of East Anglia. This crop will need to be carried up to 150 miles to the markets of Birmingham. Homegrown celery is usually ready for harvesting in July. By sowing at different times of year, the fresh vegetable is available in the shops until around Christmas. The farmer will have only a few days to harvest celery that's in the best condition for market. At one time, this harvesting would have been done by hand. Now, much is done by machine. Machine harvesting helps satisfy the huge orders made by the supermarkets. But whilst machines can harvest the crop, no machine can yet properly sort the good celery from the not so good. Supermarkets expect the celery on their shelves to look much the same throughout the season. Here, the celery heads are each cut to the same length. The outer damage sticks are removed to make each head about the same thickness. Each head of celery is individually packed in its own plastic sleeve. Packaging will look good on the supermarket shelves, but the plastic sleeve is also important in keeping the vegetable in good condition for as long as possible. At laboratories in Norwich, scientists are concerned with fresh foods and what makes them go off. OK, Arnold, what have we got here? A small collection of vegetables of the sort of quality, I think, that most people would expect to buy. I mean, nice, fresh celery, it snaps very nicely. Lettuce, which is all in one piece, a nice colour. It's not wilted, hasn't got broken leaves. Generally looks rather nice. Carrots, nice colour, no damage. Free from the obvious defect and they also snap rather nicely. What about this collection over here? Well, this is the other side of the coin, isn't it? Um, if you buy the stuff, you buy good stuff like that. If you keep it wrongly in the kitchen or in the fridge, or if the merchant or wholesaler or greengrocer keeps it wrongly, there's nothing much worse for a lettuce, for example, which has been stored perhaps on a kitchen windowsill or in the kitchen. It's gone wilted, papery, and beginning to show signs of decomposition. The extreme case, which you would never find in the home, but cabbage which has been badly stored, a severe case of fungal infection, fungal rotting. Nearly as bad, celery, not very attractive. It's microbes, bacteria and fungus that change food. Fungus grows rapidly as long, thin strands. As the microbes grow, they change the texture, the taste and the appearance of food. They make food unpleasant to look at and to eat. Microbes grow less quickly at low temperatures. By cooling celery to just a degree or so above freezing, microbe growth is kept to the minimum. The celery is sealed in a steel cylinder. The air is pumped out. Any water on the surface of the celery evaporates. The evaporating water takes latent heat from the vegetable 
and starts the cooling. A cooling system then lowers the temperature to one or two degrees Celsius. The plastic bag stops the celery from drying out any further. But there can be problems storing vegetables in fridges. At Norwich, they're experimenting with a new type of cold store. It's cold. What happens in here, Arnold? This is an experimental chill store, which is designed for the storage of all sorts of fresh produce, like this celery. It will keep for about six weeks in here. These cabbages are eight or nine months old. You can see in very, very good condition. Stored in traditional fridges, vegetables are kept cold by the air blown over cooling pipes. But the pipes themselves may be below freezing. Vegetables can be damaged by frost. And the cold air dries the vegetables by sweeping away moisture. In the experimental fridge, the air is cooled with iced water. The temperature is close to freezing point, but not below it. And the air is very moist, with nearly 100% humidity. Green vegetables last considerably longer. Celery will be harvested, packed and cooled within a few hours. But even then, that celery will start to lose taste and texture after only a few days. The pea harvesting season is short, only five or six weeks in July and early August. These themselves last only a few days, even when kept in the pod and stored under the very best conditions. Despite these problems, peas are probably the most commonly eaten green vegetable. And we expect to buy peas any time of the year. Peas are kept in good condition by freezing. It's not easy to freeze peas successfully. And the problem is this. Peas continue to respire even out of the pod. And because the pea is such a young vegetable, it respires very quickly. After a few hours of respiration, the texture and the taste of the peas will have changed. Peas need to be frozen within two hours of harvesting. At the farm and the factory, the quality of the pea is checked with a tenderometer. Overripe peas will be too squashy for freezing. Underripe peas, too hard. The pea can change from ripe to overripe between farm and factory. Before freezing, the peas are blanched in boiling water. The boiling water destroys the enzymes that control respiration in the pea. But too little time in hot water will leave the enzymes still active. Too much cooking time would turn the stream of peas into a pea soup. The water in which the peas are blanched is at the right temperature and contains all the nutrients to encourage the growth of bacteria. Samples of the cooking liquid are tested regularly in the laboratory. It's not possible to prepare foods in absolutely sterile, bacteria-free conditions. But the biologists need to be sure that the total number of bacteria is low. They're also interested in those bacteria that might cause stomach upsets. In fact, any harmful bacteria are killed by adding chlorine to the cooling water. The samples of cooking liquid are mixed with agar and left overnight in the warm. Any 
bacteria in the sample will grow to produce colonies of bacteria. The blanched peas, free from harmful bacteria, are frozen in blasts of cold air to a temperature of minus 30 degrees Celsius. The cold air carries the peas through the cooling chamber to be kept in a cold store. Frozen peas stay in storage at around minus 30 degrees Celsius until sold. Samples of peas are taken from the store, cooked and tasted. Good. Yes, Very good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. These are grade 17s. The peas are compared for taste and also colour and texture. Skins are tough. Mm. Mm. Very tough. Yeah. Mm. Not very easy to eat, are they? Really? I don't think there's very good flavour no. on them, to be honest. Very tender. Mm. Very tender. Very tender. It's just the colour that's a bit off, isn't yeah. it? Mm. I still think that one is the best, the one in the yeah. middle, and they're the worst. Mm. Colour poor, would you say? Yeah. Mm. But very, very tender. tender yeah. Finally, frozen peas are packed for transport to the shops in refrigerated vans. Freezing the vegetable allows us to buy peas throughout the year. Fresh peas would only be available for just a few weeks in summer. Most vegetables will be kept at low temperatures and in humid air, but not always. It varies from vegetable to vegetable, and this data bank has information about a whole range of vegetables and how they vary. Some vegetables can be frozen, some are destroyed by freezing, but there's a whole range of other methods for preserving foods. Many of the foodstuffs in this Chinese supermarket have been transported from the other side of the world. China, Hong Kong, and Singapore. The manufacturers have used a number of ways to keep their foods in a good, edible condition. microbes that change foodstuffs to make them inedible. Canning, pickling and the drying of foods stop or slow down microbe growth. But these techniques may also change the taste of the food.